I'd uh, like to start this uh, video with um, a relevant topic, which is an, ongo an ongoing concern within the state of Arizona. Uh, Riley McKee is missing. Um, I I know that um, the Arizona Rebellion has been trying to raise awareness about this. Um, I'm going to play you a clip from Dark Snovia on the matter of this, although I should probably explain a little bit what he says ahead of time. That's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm doing this is to explain. There, it's known that the family of this person is not very, I would say, hip to Antifa. You know, Antifa gets a bad rap a lot, you know, um, largely because of what Antifa really stands for. You know, anti-fascist action often equates to, you know, confronting the evils of colonialism and radical liberalism as well. But Antifa is typically, you know, socialists, you know, sometimes communists, sometimes anarchists, Bundists, you know, different various kinds of socialists. And one of the things that uh, the Arizona Rebellion had pointed out recently in one of their blog posts was that any socialist with resources has the obligation to have the mindset of, we serve the people. I do hope Riley McKean is found. R Riley McKee is um, 16 years old. I know one of her family members and he's this is the funny thing about him is that he's very critical of Antifa but he's very grateful currently to Antifa for the fact that we are the only ones taking this seriously it seems there isn't any press over this and that's very sad but um I think the rest of it Dark Snovia speaks for it quite well so I, I turn you over to you know that so uh, the main reason why this video is titled Stop the Press is, uh, is because, you know, um, you know, it's a famous thing that you hear about, I suppose, in movies. You know, stop the presses because you got, you know, something new must, you know, something sensational is about to be said, you know, and they need that to be print. I, I think that that's what it means. So it's very embarrassing if I've got the context wrong of what the term stop the presses means. In, in my own on-ground journalism, I've never had to say it before. But this, this is really about the fact that um, there are things happening that are crucial that would be of interest to the public, but are not, you know, no press is picking it up. Uh, this next, uh, take this next one, for instance. Um, I, I've talked before about Mayor Shreem, uh, but I, and I will again. In the Mayor Shreem neighborhood of Jerusalem, uh, whose residents are known to be fiercely anti-Zionist, Palestinian flags r regularly f fly from the rooftops and hang over the streets. The residents do not recognize the authority of the state of Israel, and they make it clear that Israeli police are not welcome there. But the state seems to feel threatened by the flags, and once in a while the police march into the neighborhood's narrow streets and alleys to cut them down. Here is a video of the latest episode which took place this past Sunday, July 9th, uh, 2023. So by the way, this is an older video, but I'm basically reading you the description provided by the guys at Nateria Carta on the Mayor Shreem neighborhood. Mayor Shreem, just to prep up again, you know, to, 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 to debrief everyone, to give everyone, you know, an update or, or a review, if you've seen these videos before, Mayor Sharim is a Palestinian neighborhood. It is a Jewish Palestinian neighborhood in the city of Jerusalem. The Palestinian residents of Mayor Sharim are completely Jewish because, you know, Palestinians are Jewish. They are Christian. They are Muslims. You know, you have to get past the Hengelian nation state, you know, falsehood you know because it has nothing it's, it's not how it works 
um, a person can could be of more than one nation, and there are you know there there are more soil based nations, and there's more diaspora based nations, and you know it, it goes on and on. Nationality is much more uh, complicated than the national question by Lenin and Stalin would have people think. Local residents protest, you know, the act. Um, police stand guard to prevent residents from blocking the, the removal of their flags. Protesters attempt to run up the stairs to protect the flags, to protect the flag. The, uh, 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 a religious uh, Jewish person, you know, searches for his yarmulke or kippah, which is religious head covering. Water is poured on the police. Police avoid objects thrown at them. Police brutal, police brutal, br brutally attack a resident who started filming police activities. Objects flying at the police, teasing with the police by escorting them with Palestinian flag. Dumpster rolls towards the police. Residents yell uh, at police Zionist terrorists. This is a very special film and I present it to you now. Wow! 
Ne Hey boef die fuck. Stay, stay, John Schmidt. Stay, Just recently, Dr. Abraham Weisfeld uh, had been arrested because he challenges the alleged validity of, you know, his condemnation from uh, the Crown Prosecutor, which there is this charge on Dr. Weisfeld that he's guilty of mischief and that he should be branded as a, a Judophobic anti-Semite, which is absolutely ridiculous. The man is a second generation Holocaust survivor. Um, when I was working with him a lot on Facebook to promote certain ideas, one of the biggest things that he was constantly engaged in was combating Holocaust denial among those that could delegitimize the anti-Zionist movement with anti-Semitism. I remember this very well. Dr. Weisfeld is anything but a Judophobic anti-Semite. In fact, what should be recognized is that Zionists are Judophobic anti-Semites, even if they come from Jewish stock. Because there are some things that need to be said here. I will try not to mince too many words, but there are some factors in here which I hope augment um, this statement by Dr. Weisfeld. I'd like to thank Jason Unruh, the Maoist rebel, for putting this on his channel so that people may see what Dr. Weisfeld has to say since he was in jail for four days. And I was a little bit surprised, but I'd said before in a previous video that, you know, Dr. Weisfeld's tactics have been known to work. The man is a genius, and he's a national treasure to the Jewish diaspora nation as well. I do hope that this video is spread around. Please, you know, let everybody know about, you know, um, the missing person in Arizona. Please let people know about the Jewish-Palestinian neighborhood in Jerusalem. And let everybody know about Dr. Abram Weisfeld. Hey, he, his, he, he's basically being politically persecuted for being Jewish. That's the irony of this. The whole attack on Dr. Weisfeld is anti-Semitic judophobia. Because the Jewish people are not connected, really, to Zionism. We're really not. Not really. I'll say this, okay, so Hindu nationalism is an aberration for Hindus, but it still comes as, a, as, a, as an incorrect tendency from the Hindus. Uh, you have to separate, by the way, jihad and jihadism, but jihadism, while it is an aberration from Islam, it is still coming from Islam. So you have to understand something. Zionism is not like jihadism, and again, you should, you should separate jihad from jihadism, but Zionism is not like jihadism or Hindu nationalism. Zionism doesn't actually come from the Jewish people. Zionism is not a Jewish problem. It is, however, the res it is a Jewish responsibility, though, and let me explain. Zionism is, is in fact, the Judo-Christian crisis. That's really what it is. Anybody who's Jewish or Christian should know how absurd the term judo Christian is in the first place. Like anybody who's who's a devout Christian of any sort, and any self-respecting Jewish person would also know that these this this term judo judo Christian is ridiculous. It, it's it's part of Americanism basically. Um, but some things that must be clarified, and I I I may have said this before, but I'm going to say this again. 
There are some things that a lot of our communist friends don't like to hear. One of them being that, yes, Stalin did support the state of Israel, and there is no justification for that support. Um, many communists will say that, oh, well, you know, had Stalin and, you know, like, had the Soviet Union not supported the, the creation of the state of Israel, the British would still be running it. Here's the thing. The British recognized Palestine. Yeah, it's screwed up that they also recognized the Zionist state, but in the Balfour Declaration itself, the, the Palestinian state is recognized. This is wiped away completely with the founding of 1948 in the state of Israel. Okay? So, communists should actually endure better criticism when it comes to the fact that, no, you don't have an untarnished legacy. I'm, no one can say that the Bund has an untarnished legacy per se, but you cannot say that of the communists either. Every group following any kind of ideology or methodology will make mistakes, and if we are to be credible when combating capitalism worldwide and getting the people of the peoples of the world to see how bad capitalism really is, we cannot cover up our mistakes. Okay? The irony is there are capitalist imperialist countries where they talk about their mistakes in the past, but yet communists, a lot of them do not want to do the same thing. Now I'm not saying this against communists, I'm saying that there's some context that must be understood. Zionism is not Judo Jewish supremacy. That's a farce. That's, 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 in fact, that's anti-Semitic to say that. Now, I'm not saying that there couldn't be Judo Jewish supremacy. I'm not saying that there cannot be Jewish supremacy. I am saying, simply, Zionism is not Jewish supremacy. Jewish supremacy would be completely different than what we're seeing with Zionism, if such a thing were to happen. It'd be very, I would say it'd be very hard to carry out Jewish supremacy. Um, I'm not claiming such a concept is impossible. I'm saying Zionism doesn't fit that. Everything that you're about to hear from Dr. Weisfeld is true. Again, I would thank I would like to thank Jason Unruh, the Mouse Rebel, for putting this video out on his channel. Dr. Weisfeld was in was in jail, uh, you know, uh, for four days. He went to the Jewish Community Center as he had planned, and they arrested him. The thing is, is that there is no genuine charge. I'm still having a hard time, I'm still having a hard time understanding a lot of this, even as I understand this case more and more. But the simple truth is, there is no case against Dr. Weisfeld. And he knows it. And he needs everybody else to know it, too. We all need to stand with Dr. Weisfeld here. I would like to thank all the communists who did not ignore this. Um... You have the gratitude of the, of the Jewish Socialist Bund, and I'm sure you have the gratitude of Dr. Abraham Weisfeld. So without any further ado, stop the presses. I got one more to roll for you, and this r recent video, you know, is very important. This is a statement from Dr. Abraham Weisfeld to the city of Montreal, Quebec, the municipality of Canada. I want you to hear, you know, what I had to say in the previous video, the, uh, the volume was uh, very poor, so let me reiterate that we just came out of the Montreal City Council meeting, in which I questioned the executive member, Alex Norris, about his responsibilities in overseeing the uh, activities of the police. You know, initially he didn't want to consider the matter because he considered, he called it a judicial matter and he didn't want to interfere with the courts. Well, this wasn't a judicial matter. The condition uh, banning me from the Jewish Community Center was imposed by the police, not the court. I'm not convicted of anything. I am innocent until proven otherwise. And I believe that uh, my innocence will be proved in court. Because, you know, writing and up free Palestine on an Israel Day poster that is on a post illegally in the first place, you know, like, cannot be considered seriously, you know, by any court. And it won't be. Now, what happened this evening is that I asked Alex Norris, you know, if he agreed, you know, with having me confined in a police cell overnight without a mattress, without cover, without a pillow, and with four fluorescent uh, uh, tubes, you know, like shining all night long, you know, so that you couldn't get any sleep. You know, like, what is this all about? You know, the police call this protocol. Well, if it's protocol, 
than let Alex Norris, who's elected to protect us, you know, say something to the police about this. Because he's supposed to be able to talk to the police, and the police are supposed to be listening to him. So, you know, get to work, really. You know, this is pathetic. You know, the police think that they can, you know, uh, arrest anybody, anywhere, anytime. The police think they can judge you before a judge does, and the police think they can punish you before a judge issues any punishment as well. This is what the police are about here and uh, anywhere else as far as I can see. You know, including um, you know, deadly execution in the United States. You know, the police are, you know, insane. Uh, and the conditions here of detention are inhuman. Inhumane and inhuman. Okay, that's enough for now. You know, this case is going to be a precedent. Already it's set a precedent, you know, because it's declared that being anti-Zionist, which is what they're accusing me of, okay, I accept the accusation, being anti-Zionist is not necessarily anti-Semitic. That's what the judge has declared on Friday. And also declared that, you know, being a, uh, a Jewish person, representing the Jewish Bund, Jewish Socialist Bund in particular, you know, uh, is a, a component of the Jewish civil society, a component of the Jewish political culture. And that the dispute I have, you know, with the Zionists, that the Zionists have with me and with the Jewish Bund is an internal Jewish matter and it should not be regulated by the police. So, we have a precedent here that's very important that I'm going to translate, circulate, and it's going to become a precedent internationally to protect all protesters against the crimes of the Zionist regime, which is a Zionist regime. It's not a Jewish regime. It's not Jewish supremacy. You know, that's anti-Semitic to say so. Even if it's Israeli, you know, like protest organizations do so, they're just indoctrinated by the Zionist system so much they can't even distinguish between Jewish and Zionist. Well, there is a distinction, and I've just proved it. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.